Ever since the launch of the seventh generation Chevy Corvette, it was inevitable that a convertible version would join the lineup. Well, here it is. To tell us all about it, let's talk to, uh, how about I let him introduce himself? Taj. Taj and Jukter. It's like Taj. J-U-K-T-R, Jukter. So uh, what's your official role in? I'm the chief engineer for the Corvette, so Woo. all variants. So we got That's the all right, I work on. We I'll, got the right dude then. You have me. <laughs> <laughs> what are the key differentiators between the convertible and the coupe? Obviously the roof is a big deal. One of the unusual things about the Corvette coupe and convertible is how little difference there is. Mm. Normally you do a coupe, and then you have to reinforce the heck out of the underbody. This car is designed as an open car because the coupe, the roof comes out, 60% uh, stiffer than the previous generation car. And so we can use all those exact same structural pieces in the body structure of this car. All we do is take out the hoop behind the seats that holds the roof and, and the hatch in place, mm -hmm. and we just cap it over. No extra reinforcements anywhere in the body. Because you got that solid platform, you can use all the same suspension pieces is all it, the way through. Is it literally the same? Literally the same. No different part numbers anywhere in the suspension. Since you don't have to do a ton of reinforcement, how does the convertible compare to the coupe when it comes to weight? Almost identical. Ah. Since all the parts are the same, it's also the only thing that adds a, just a couple kilos is the motor and the hydraulics for the mm -hmm. power top. What should we know about the top? Well, the top for the first time on a Corvette is a full power top. There's no latches to undo at the header. Uh, so it's a one button top, the button's right here. It operates at speed, so up to 35 miles an hour, you can put it up or down. And one of the reasons it can go down at speed is the tonneau cover doesn't flip up like we did before, mm -hmm. where it opens up on a yeah. simple mechanism. It's a very complicated multi-link design, which actually takes the tonneau and places it over the deck lid, so it keeps it out of the airstream. So you don't have a big parachute up you here. You don't have a big parachute, a big drag chute. And the top by itself is enough of a drag chute. Mm -hmm. Canvas top, that means you don't have the complexity and size of a retractable hard top, but uh, one of the things people might think is that it's going to be loud inside. No, uh, the latest canvas tops are extremely quiet. In fact, the outside canvas is a multi-layer acoustic canvas. So actually the convertible is a little bit quieter driving down the road than the coupe is. Huh, so if you're doing long distance travel, buy the convertible. Well, but the trunk is a little bit smaller. It just smaller. depends on what you want and you don't have access to it. In the coupe, you can re reach back and you can get stuff. Mm -hmm. So, there, you know, there's just depends what you want. How, uh, how is the trunk space, uh, given that you go, you went with the soft top versus the hard top space? Well, it's a lot better. You can put golf bags in here, all sorts of stuff. Okay. Given that you have a coupe and a convertible to buy, which one would you buy? Mm -hmm. I like the flexibility of a coupe. Okay. Well, I guess maybe we'll just go spend some hours driving second best. <laughs> <laughs> it's not second best. <laughs> It all sounds good coming out of Taj's mouth, but can the open-air Corvette possibly live up to our now elevated expectations? Actually, yes. For those not in the know, the new Chevy Corvette is a far cry from the previous Corvettes. For the C7 generation, uh, they decided to make the interior knob suck. And boy, is that nice. Look around here. Everything's like soft and it feels high quality. And these screens look high tech and they're not that cheesy dot matrix stuff that they had previously. Perhaps the Corvette's greatest asset is the fact that it requires so little of you. Here we are, top down, kind of meandering along through a desert community, and it's totally relaxed. The suspension is absorbing bumps pretty well, and the wind is nicely channeled around us, and ah, it's just a really comfortable place to be. And yet, there's a ton of capability. There's 450 horsepower available whenever you want it, and a super capable chassis. It's uh, kind of walking that line between performance and comfort, and walking it very, very well. Okay, there are a couple of very minor accommodations. Over your right shoulder with the top up, eh, visibility is pretty dicey. It's better in the coupe because it's got that little quarter window, but just keep that in mind when you're making lane changes. And the front lip, there's a little skirt down there. It's really low to the ground. So unless you think about it when you're coming in and out of parking lots, you're probably gonna scrape it. So just be careful. Other than that, drive the Corvette like a normal car. It'll treat you well. One of the contributing factors that makes driving the Corvette so nice is the transmission. There's a manual, certainly, but the automatic six-speed is really nice for cruising around Palm Springs here. The shifts are nice and smooth. There we are. Oh, there's like, you almost can't feel the transition from gear to gear, yet when you put it into manual mode and you use the paddle shifts and you downshift, 
The gear shifts happen with an urgency that you would expect from a performance car. It's a really nice pairing with the 6.2 liter V8. We might be a dying breed, but drivers who like to shift for themselves have a friend in the standard 7-speed manual. With surprisingly light clutch efforts, really nice shifter feel, and an automatic rev matching feature a la the Nissan 370Z, the three-pedal Corvette is simple and satisfying to drive. Except, of course, for a carryover fuel saving feature that, when shifting from first at light throttle, forces the transmission into fourth gear instead of second. Like an air horn at the symphony, we'd love to see this feature quietly shown the exit. A big part of the Corvette's appeal has always been the value angle. $57,000, destination included, isn't cheap, but consider the entire Corvette convertible package and it's a freaking bargain. Standard features include dual zone climate control, a nine speaker Bose audio system, this eight inch touchscreen, and oh yeah, a 6.2 liter V8 that despite putting out 455 horsepower, 460 with the performance exhaust, still returns nearly 30 MPG on the highway, all in a package that handles impeccably and looks cool too. If you've always dismissed the Corvette and the convertible in particular as a midlife desperation machine, this might be hard to accept. I'm afraid I might be becoming a Corvette. <laughs> We're having a hard time saying, Mom, Dad, I'm afraid I might be becoming a, uh, a Corvette guy. Ooh. But the C7 Corvette is really, really good. Not only is it the best Corvette yet, but it gives many pricier sports cars cause for concern. Who knows, if Chevy maintains this momentum, the Corvette might just become the car for enjoying your youth instead of recapturing it. <laughs>